head. We're just having a conversation. That's it. With headphones on. Just a conversation <laughs> with, with three pals. Oh, wow. You have a very nice podcast oh, voice. Oh, he does. He does. How do I match that? You, I mean, you're, no, you, you're you doing great. Let oh me give you a little bit goodness. of... Give her a little more. Give me a little bit of sauce. Here. Give me a little bit of sauce. You just, it, it's more technique than Clearly. anything else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, okay. <laughs> Off to a great start. All right. What, uh, team lead? What's your, what's your official title? Oh, what do we no. call you? This like is where we're starting. Yes. Queen? Um, I am team leader with yeah. Keller Williams Central Coast and that's it. That's where the conversation, that's it. We're not quite sure what that means yet. But you, I was just walking by your office today and it's like Grand Central Station. It is. It do is, you get yeah. anything done? How uh, do you get stuff only done? Only some days. Yeah. Not okay. at the office if I do. You have to go home. That's not where I'm getting it done at. Yeah. Okay. But I love that. I love being that space there where people can come and share what's going on. Do you? You don't get bothered by it? I haven't yet. I'll get back to you. Okay. I haven't yet. I actually feel like that is a gift for me that I, they might not realize people when they're coming in for help that it's like, it's everything for me. Well, Bobby, that. you're a gift to us. Oh, <laughs> too sweet. <laughs> yeah. I did that. <laughs> Okay. You're good. Yeah, yeah. Good, thanks, thanks, yeah thanks. good transition. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so this morning we had this amazing um, dual team training, which yeah. Jeff, you led a lot of it. So nice work, buddy. It was fantastic though. What Bobby took us through was yeah. a great exercise. And I don't know, maybe Bobby, you could run us kind of through the thought of what you did, the, the process. And um, I had written like a whole page just before you go into it. Of, of like what my perfect day would look like. And then you were oh, talking a bit about it. And then I literally like crossed it out. I was like, okay, I didn't go deep enough. I, I really did not And then like you elaborated and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is, this could be really powerful for people. Yeah. Well, I'm curious as before you go into that, mm -hmm. why did you choose that topic to bring to the training today? Well, so originally when we had all talked about this, which was, it was a little last minute with the, and it was super vague the, uh, Paul just said, Hey, we're going to talk about, um, standards and raising your standards. And I was like, okay, that's five minutes of conversation for me. Like, what does that even mean? Um, so of course I did the Bobby like deep dive and had to take it way further than it probably needed to no, go. No, no, it was good. It really, for me, that was a cool practice. Cause I had to sit with that and go through my own process with it before I could present on it. And I think it's something that we gloss over a lot with our standards and, and, you know, you talk about raising your standards all the time. I want to work out more. I want to expect more from a relationship. I want, you know, a better standard of living, but we, first we have to sit with where we're at and where we're starting from. So that's mm -hmm. kind of where that exercise came in. I was like, I don't know how to raise my standards if I'm not even in reality with where, like, where have I landed here and where did those come from? which is why the conversation started with, you know, did we get our standards from r our religion that we grew up in, from our parents, from the friends that were around, and then we kind of went, spiraled out. From why that. do you think people don't start where you wanted us to start today? Do you think that it's difficult for them or they don't, they don't sit with it enough to even know how to articulate where, where they are? Or? I think we're not living consciously. I think to a certain extent we're scrolling and we're being fed and we're being told and it's, it's not comfortable always to realize that we're participating in our life. That means we have to do hard things and we have to make the call and we have to choose not to hang out with some people who are easier to hang out with. And, you know, it takes a participation in your own life at a level that, I mean, frankly, a lot of people don't live like that. That's interesting. You use the, the term we're being fed mm -hmm. and then obviously we just call it feed, mm -hmm. right? On social media, what's on your feed? Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, we're so okay being fed by people we don't know mm -hmm. that and whatever just, just shows up. Right. And somehow that's just that's like what we do. Grazing. Right. Which <laughs> that actually kind of struck me when I said part of the exercise we did and we're, I'm, we're kind of all over the place. We can back up. But part of the exercise was write down the five people you spend the most time with. A lot of people were like, they, they couldn't even think of five people that they spend time with, but you better believe that they're scrolling and looking at mm. the same, probably yeah. five accounts, you know, relying on those people to give them the information for their day or whoever they follow. That was actually for me kind of weird. So like the, the thing was like the five people we spend the most time with, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, there's like my team mm -hmm. and there's like my life group, my family. And that was easy. So that's honestly, that's like a bunch of people, but like people that outside of that, like that I like intimately spend time with, mm -hmm. it's like not really many. I, I was talking to a friend 
and who he just got a job at a Diablo Canyon and he's, he's new to it. So he's, he's going through all the training and you know, his schedule's a mess and all those kinds of mm-hmm. things. So we caught up for lunch and we were talking a little bit tangentially about this topic. And he was saying, gosh, this is like the most community I've had in a long time. And, and I just assume that he and his wife and they've got two young kids that, you know, they have, they live in the village and they, they've got like, you know, block parties all the time. And you look on Instagram and everyone looks like they've just got everything they've ever wanted. And I think it's not that they don't have good community. It's just that, you know, we're not living, I think in the moment and the present very often. And you're just letting life happen to you so much that like when you actually sit down with somebody for Mm -hmm. lunch, it's like, and you talk deeply and you care about each other that, that you don't get that very often. It's like you go moving on to the next thing, especially for a group of realtors back to this morning it's right. like you're on to the next deal and the next and everyone's kind of like minded the same mm-hmm. so often in this kind of industry that like slowing down and thinking about how am I being present was a really good exercise so yeah that's actually something that's what I'm saying when I t- I take that for granted sometimes being at Keller and being in a space where people walk in and we have these conversations daily mm-hmm. I there's never been a day that I've gone home and haven't felt like I connected with somebody deeply mm-hmm. like that is pretty cool to, really to cool. take for granted walking into an environment where people are, are looking for that and, you know, kind of willing to help each other out in those ways. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So walk us through what we did this morning. Um, okay. What did we do this morning? So like I brought my notes just cause it's, it's been a day. Notes that are allowed. Are already yeah. this morning. Um, so we, we spoke about raising your standards. I think one of the first things that I kind of had to shift my mindset is out of the, Okay, we need to raise up and try to like almost like we're trying to get to this level, this high level. It kind of feels like it implies competition to me. But one of the first thoughts I had was we're competing with ourselves. But the the biggest goal I have is living in alignment with my true vision for my life. So you can call it raising standards. I like to call it like getting closer to your own alignment, closer to your own vision for your life. Um a lot of times when we set goals, we don't accomplish them because we're not actually truly like heartfelt invested in them. You could say you want to make X amount of dollars. You can say you mm-hmm. want whatever level of success. But like if it's not our vision and what's been put in our heart of what we're here to create and what we're here to be a part of, I think it falls flat. Um, and sometimes those visions are so far from where we're living already. I think it can be discouraging or people might not know where to begin. So the first step is honoring that vision and what's true for you. How do you get people there though? You know, because we've been in that, we talk about this a lot where, Mm -hmm. you know, that it could be that the goal is financial and there's nothing wrong with that per se, but we've found that it doesn't really drive us in the way that Mm -hmm. really connecting with your core motivations Mm -hmm. do, but how do you get people there? I don't think you do get people Mm. there. I think that's why I I say every morning a prayer that I'm land in front of the people I'm meant to, the people that need the conversation, the the conversations that I need to have. Um, I think we find each other when we, when we need it. I don't think you can drag anyone to that. I know nobody could have drug me there, Mm -hmm. you know, before you're willing to actually, and it, it is, it's, it can be, you know, we go through life and it, sometimes it feels like, gosh, we already made it this far in and we've, we've done all the things we were supposed to do. And we checked the boxes, we got to where we were supposed to be it feels heavy feeling like you might have to make a U-turn, you know, and let go of a lot of what you've worked for to get to that true alignment. So some people won't. Mm. One of the things that kind of happened for me or was nice when you were taking us to this exercise, um, there was like a, like a, a goal sheet as well. <laughs> um, that was for like a different segment. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, my, my number one goal for the, for 2024 was like to have unique and this could change a little bit, but unique and powerful experiences with the people that I care and love, like love for or something like that. And so, but it was like nothing to do with money. Mm -hmm. You know, usually my number one goal is okay to do 35 transactions or whatever. Like it was all, you know, that's how we do it. But it's like, Hey, my number one actual goal has nothing to do with deals. It's Mm -hmm. all about family and people I love and care about. And like we had this health, you know, health care with someone I love and care about. And it's like, Oh man, that puts, everything in perspective uh, my value is my family like mm-hmm. it is my friends it is our community so like our goal should actually sometimes be in relation to that mm-hmm. 
And I don't know, the way you did it was like super cool. Well, and that's the beauty of success, right? If we have the money and we have the ability to take care of those people, then one, we can take the time and we're not stuck working a nine to five, right. working hard. And, you know, we can actually spend the time that we need to. And two, like you can actually be a source of support for those yeah. people when they need to. And that I was I had multiple conversations after this morning that were in alignment with that. It's it's the higher goal. Higher goal. Yeah. yeah. What is your motivation? What is your motivation? <laughs> um, okay. So we jumped around a lot. Sorry. So um, we talked about kind of the quality of life, why it's important, the two things that are tied to it. The first thing, um, this was from a, po- a Huberman podcast. Um, the first thing is agency. And the second thing is gratitude. Mm. So agency is your freedom and your ability to exercise that, that right, that, you know, decision making, being in charge of your own life. Um, and one thing that I shared that I loved so much was from Gene Rivers, who spoke at a Keller Williams event. And he talked about, yeah, you like this That's one. good. Yeah. Um, he talked about giving something up every year and making a choice. He's given up caffeine. He's given up sugar. He's, you know, made these different, different choices to exercise his right um, over himself and his self-control. And he said the way he viewed himself really changed and mm. really shifted through that. And that just, I, it's kind of stayed with me and you know, the way you view yourself so really, really matters. Yeah. Exercising the authority over our body sometimes mm-hmm. so hard. Like Travis not drinking coffee today couldn't happen. It didn't happen. And he shouldn't really be drinking coffee right now. Dude, just bro. Couldn't, couldn't stop. He's just down. Just shots fired are you, on air. Are you off coffee? This is tea, bro. Oh, bro. But I said, but I coffee. did drink coffee. He goes, cause I'm having some like, uh, my, okay. So let's just go there. We're going there. We're going We're there. Going there. <laughs> okay. Live so, raw. <laughs> So work has been, life has been so stressful the last couple of years. And then last week I started having this like, what, acid reflux or something? My wife's like, you for sure have an ulcer. And I went to the doctor, it's not an ulcer, but she gave me like a prescription antacid or something like that to take. And so t- I didn't have coffee this morning. So at the thing, I like poured a coffee and Jeff is like, bro, you shouldn't have the coffee. I was like, I know. This but, is a huge yes. mistake. Gunk, gunk, gunk. But I'm, <laughs> I'm going you to. You try not having coffee. Exactly. So <laughs> failed, but um, but tea it is right now for me. But cutting, so. like going back to like exercising mm-hmm. discipline over ourselves, cutting things out, mm-hmm. such a good practice. And I mean, it's so hard to do though. And I guess for me, what's been really hard in life and like where I'm like, oh, I put, I put so much in and I take so little out. But by saying, by not saying no, mm-hmm. I'm not saying yes to the things that I really value. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, what's funny. I was listening to this um this podcast from a pastor and he was talking about spiritual disciplines. And so, especially in the Western United States, we're like, or Western America, United States, we're so good at practices, spiritual or otherwise that add, Mm -hmm. you know, but we're very bad at practices that subtract. Like he was talking about silence and solitude, fasting, these kinds of things that are so hard for us because we're so used to, because for one, it's like, I can add it to a list and I can check it off Mm -hmm. and we feel really good about that. But practices that take away where you like, you feel the actual literal hunger pains and then you've got to wrestle with that and it's good to have stuff taken away is so hard for us. You're left with yourself. Oh yeah. Like silence and solitude for most people. It's like, you don't want to be alone with your thoughts. Mm -hmm. Bobby, Bobby made us do something else with our bank accounts. You should tell. Oh Oh, yeah. So I thought that was, I know that That was was, great. That was kind of a last minute ad, but it is interesting with real especially because a lot of times the conversation is around income and money. And I love asking people when they share what's really important to them. And I mean, they come in super convincing. This is what's my top priority. And then, so today I did, I said, okay, everyone has access to their online banking. I want you to pull up your account and tell me what you've spent the most money on in the last, what did I say? Like three weeks. I don't know last week. Um, because what we spend our money on yeah. is a huge indicator of where our priorities are. And by what I spend on food, I should be like 400 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> it's a good check and it's a good reality check for yourself. I know for me, it's like, and there's no shame in it. I mean, if anything, it's shifted my thinking now when I go to spend, like, mm. how does this feel? You know, oh, I'm so I, I want health in 2024. I'm literally driving through Taco Bell as I'm thinking about it. So I get it. Like it's, you know, we all have to keep ourselves in check. Yeah. Um, the other thing that we did, the other exercise was writing down the people that you're spending, the, t- the top five people, which we spoke about a little bit, um, that you're spending the most time with. And that was interesting too, thinking about the characteristics of those people. They're not always selected by choice. You know, a Mm. lot of times in family or whatever these dynamics work, whoever you're naturally around, 
um, you can kind of start pinpointing these little characteristics of some that you want to learn from and want to absorb. But for me, it was really enlightening to be like, oh, I, this might be why I'm feeling that way. Yeah. You know, this is the energy I'm around yeah. all the time. Yeah, that was a cool tweak because I've, I've done that before where you write down the people that you're around, but then you, you had us write an, an adjective or something, description about mm-hmm. that person, like mm-hmm. what it is that you value about them. What you admire about them. What you them. admire about them, mm-hmm. yeah. So, you know, for me, I didn't break it into groups, um, but I, it was like, it was like my wife, my kids. And then Jeff, <laughs> <laughs> that's the best. I was like, yes. So <laughs> yeah, made the list. it made the list. So, but it was neat to then think one level deeper mm-hmm. about what it is that I admire about each of them. Mm-hmm. And I mean, in, in my case, all five are, are amazing people to be around and they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're leveling me up all the time. But, but to think about what it is specifically that they bring to the table in a word or two was, was a really, uh, was a little bit more challenging than I thought, but really good mm-hmm. to reflect and to see kind of like, you know, my son brings a very different thing than my daughter does and my wife does and Jeff does. But mm-hmm. then, you know, it paints this picture of who hopefully I'm becoming because you become like the people you're closest mm-hmm. with. So that was so re- true. really good. Um, you mentioned agency and then gratitude also. Like, yeah. So gratitude. I know for anyone who knows me, this is like I feel so strongly about gratitude. Um, I don't have the exact quote or the information, the article that it came from, but I read a few weeks back that gratitude and love are the same frequency. And so when we're talking all the time about goal setting and what we want to get and how we, what we want to attract the best position you can get yourself in is the, is operating at a level of gratitude because it's love is the highest frequency, highest vibration. So if you can start from that state, you'll be leaps and bounds ahead with trying to attract and trying to draw in what your, what your goals are. Yeah. Jeff and I talk about this all the time and Adam, like the being, again, being present to the moment because all the things I'm afraid of are tomorrow's problems or next Mm -hmm. year's problems. Mm -hmm. But I found that I tend to sacrifice today on the altar of tomorrow, Mm -hmm. you know, like, well, and and so I've, I have a practice of writing down three things that I'm grateful for every morning and it's good. And sometimes they're small things and sometimes they're big things. But, Mm -hmm. you know, Jeff, you, you were talking about, um, something we were listening to. That's like, what were you saying? Gratitude. Pastor David, who's amazing, um, was talking about gratitude. This is a while back in a different series, but he was saying like gratitude not expressed is really lack, like lacking. Like it's not yeah. actual gratitude. Like there's an action that's required mm. for gratitude because mm. it's, it's actually being shown. So whether it's like, you could be grateful for something that you have experienced and you can like sit down and like take a moment to experience that. But if you don't do that, then you're not having an experience of gratitude. Or like you can show someone gratitude by telling them or doing something for them. Mm -hmm. And that's gratitude. Like, let's say I'm really grateful internally for the role of you both in my life. Say more. Yeah. I never, (laughs) but I never express that. Mm -hmm. Then where the gratitude is just with me, it's just sitting with me. The, the, the act of showing gratitude is like really, really powerful. Um, and then that's like what kind of completes the full circle. Yeah, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy too, because mm-hmm. I think the more you look for it and notice it and express it, the more you see it and right. notice it. I mean, it's just, yeah. you, you, of course. yeah, it's like, yeah. And the inverse is true as well. It is. So. Yes. We've, we've all proven that to ourselves in one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. How you're focusing on it. Well, and that's why I like wrapping up that exercise with the future self. So we went through like oh, a, a day in the life. So we, we kind of refined it. So we set some sort of standard we wanted to raise or something that we wanted to work on for the next year. And then, um, we went through, um, I guess kind of like a perfect day in the life. If you were living, if you're that person living the way you want to be living and it takes it one step further. I know this is like, this is where the challenge really hits people for like, Oh, I want to be successful and I want to have X, Y, and Z in my life to look like this, but to actually sit in what it would feel like and what it would look like to be that person, to wake up in the morning and let your feet hit the ground, knowing you're, you know, whether it's where you want to be living, who you want to be waking up next to the, the activities of the day. So writing that out a perfect day of like what that would look like really puts you there. And that's when we did the exercise of closing your eyes and giving thanks for that already being in the works. It's already coming. It's already happening. It's already a reality because the second that you can envision it, it's, it's begun. Yeah. It's so good. I think when I did that exercise, I wrote down a pretty similar day to what I have now. Mm-hmm. And then, um, and then you were like challenging someone a little bit on their day and you were like, Hey, like 
what about like the feelings that you're experiencing when that happens, this and that. And I just was like, you know what? So good. I just crossed my whole thing out. <laughs> I'm like, what would, what would the actual, like, what would be the ideal day? Like give myself the freedom. I haven't done the exercise again yet, mm-hmm. but I want to give myself the freedom and be like, is it, you know, like I, I assume there's things, but it, is it really how I think it would be mm-hmm. with, with, with experiencing actual emotions around each thing that I did. Mm -hmm. Maybe instead of getting up and working out or something, maybe it's going to snuggle in my kids or something. Who knows? Like I just want to have that freedom to, Hey, that's ideal. Like that would be the feelings, the emotions around that would be the most powerful day Mm -hmm. that there could be. Yeah. I botched that exercise. Did you? Yeah, for sure. (laughs) You were looking around. Uh, uh, Yeah. (laughs) Well, because what I, what I ended up doing, that's just my normal look. But (laughs) what I did was just very tactical. I I was like, Seven six thirty, wake up. Mm-hmm. Seven thirty, this eight, so this male nine. Of you. Well, it yeah. totally is. <laughs> and I so I got. Oh, that sounds like a great day. But then when you were pushing us, and it didn't totally register at first. Like, how do you feel though when you mm-hmm. like those kinds of things? Like, oh yeah, it really didn't. I wasn't thinking about it in mm-hmm. those terms. Um, and I think that's way more powerful because it connects you to that goal Mm -hmm. maybe in a way that might actually get you there versus just jotting down stuff. There's a guy, Steve Lawson, I think who created um, a monk manual, which is a a, a planner that I use a 90 day planner. And he talks about being versus doing. And so I was going into doing mode Mm -hmm. and you were talking about being mode. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just way more powerful. Yeah. I think it's also so easy to say the things you think you're supposed to say. I mean, it's like, I know we've had scripts forever. It's like, you know, Keller Williams is really big on talking about your big why. And I've loved it. I've eaten it up since I first joined the company. I, I thought I had it dialed, but when we aren't authentic and we're not actually speaking what's true for us and we're not like in like, like, that's why when I talk about that, I'm like, it has to be like gut wrenching to think of not having this outcome. Like we need to feel so connected to our purpose and what we're here to serve, who we're here to serve, that it feels really like trauma, not being able to live that out. You Mm -hmm. know, if we don't have that like grit, then there's not going to be, there's not going to be much else. You know, we're just, we're just winding the clock down. That was a really good. I hadn't heard that before. Winding the clock down. Winding the clock down. I don't know where that came down. from. That's that good. That is good. <laughs> not what you want. I heard the word grit too. I'm like, yeah. yeah. Grit is such a great thing to have that I feel we're losing a lot mm. of. Yeah. So Bobby, you have a morning like this morning. Mm-hmm. What, what do you hope people do in the coming days and weeks to, because it's so easy to just let that be a thing you did mm-hmm. and you go on. Honestly, for myself, I have to let go of what anyone does with Mm. anything. I think that's like my work this time. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love, if nothing else, that true conversations come from something like that. I mean, I ultimate goal is everybody is so dialed in and they're living their purpose. The reality is we're all at such different levels and layers of our path and figuring out where we need to be and what we, you know, what we're ready for. Um, But what I do love is that having those sessions and these like exercises the conversations that come afterwards I feel like it opens something up that we're really not getting in the everyday life you know it starts a deeper conversation so yeah. it made me happy it's good yeah it's fun really good Bobby you're incredible thank you for having me of course Thanks for being fun. on Appreciate and, it. and for the headphones <laughs> <laughs> my accessories that's right make you look real official <laughs> real official all right thanks guys thank Appreciate you it.